Hi, uh, how's it? It's the next day uh, from yesterday. Uh, y you would understand what in what even that means if at all you checked out my content from yesterday. Uh, I was quite distraught yesterday when I came here and I chatted. So this is the update. And besides, I record uh, every day. I've made it editor. I have made it a determination to upload every single day. Most especially because I have been targeted to stop doing ministry, so for those reasons I'm just ramping up. Even when I feel like I don't have anything to say, I frankly have been wanting to not record because I'm really down and out, but it is that very, um, it's a reverse spite, essentially. You send me a curse to stop with what I'm doing, and I then just do it. Anyway, to display a point, um, besides I do have much to say, I still have the residue of what under heaven it is that attacked me yesterday through the, my mom. It's still on me. So there's a lot of sorrow in my soul. Y'all know I, I wear the same clothes in a row over and over again. Frankly, don't care to change for who am I doing it. Uh, I'll probably change out tomorrow because I think it's time, but whatever. Look, um, I keep getting the same kinds of dreams in a loop. And these dreams are frankly from people who are arrogant, like extremely arrogant. Witchcraft is a naive man's sport. I like to say that because these are people who have got lofty pretensions and grandiose missions that they conjure up in their brains. And then because they are anonymous, or at least they imagine them anonymous, because of the fact that witchcraft is, is, be, is they sitting behind spells instead of actively doing some of the most brave and brazen things on earth. Uh, two people that could get them arrested, put in physical jails, because there is an element of anonymity. They try anyway. They experiment. But they experiment on things that they are aware they are, na they are naive concerning. Yeah, they they experiment on things that they know they're, they're naive concerning, so they would never try them in physical waking space. That's why I like to call witches cowards. They would never experiment with these things in waking space. In their own personal capacity, they would never try and sabotage people like this. But they use witchcraft because they, th they thoroughly imagine that it's this magic wand they can wave all over the show. I keep getting dreams of the exact same strategy coming at me, but this time around I keep seeing dead people. As in human beings that are actively seized, you know, dead in waking life that we know, that are representing these witches. One such human being that I see a lot of is AKA the dead celebrity in this country. He was a rapper, he passed away, he got shot dead some time ago. Um, yeah, I keep getting AKA, I keep dreaming about AKA doing the exact same things that the wicked man from America is doing, the wicked witch from South Africa is doing, my mom, the um, my, my sisters, the uh, whole of my family, my former friends, my cousins, etc. They keep on morphing, shape-shifting essentially in my dreams into dead people. Um, and the male conglomerate in particular keep getting represented by AKA. I have seen my ex-boyfriend acting like AKA being AKA. But I could, I got a vibe that was basically oozing out of AKA that it was rather actually my ex. While people might resent these prophecies, I don't really care because the Bible says that um, uh, people in the last days are going to be self-adoring, very narcissistic. And when you're self-adoring, you're going to hate a God that tells you exactly who you are and what you are. And one of the admonitions in the word of God is that we must not despise prophecy. And witches despise prophecy because prophets are in the business of prophesying their demise, their demise, like their downfall. So the thing about um, the hatred of prophecy is that people, upon hating such prophecy, then try to effectively fulfill the opposite of that prophecy coming to pass. The reason why I am as severely abused as I am by my family is because I prophesied over them. I told them that their dingy acts are going to get them judged in a most humiliating fashion, and so they've done everything in their power to try and prevent my prophecies from coming to pass. But that's just the thing about prophecy. Usually the recalcitrant human being that is being prophesied over tends to fulfill the very prophecy that they're trying to block by try by basically the acts, the deeds that they walk in to block the prophecy. So the very first step that they take to make sure that this prophecy does not come to pass ultimately fulfills the prophecy. They shoot themselves in the foot, they enter into a downward spiral. Let me make an example. Uh, going, imagine going to a wedge in a room, right, in a bedroom, where it is that they are sitting, and you knock on this bedroom, and you, you, oh, they open for you, and you say to them, thus saith the Lord, because of the amount of fornication that you do in this bedroom, uh, the Lord is going to inspire in your bones HIV if you don't stop with your fornication, 
And if you don't repent, you are going to die. Repent or perish. I know it's a little bit like, I actually use, uh, use even HIV because a lot of the people that are coming up against me right now are ransacked because of the fact that they got prophesied to disease from fornication. They didn't, and then they got HIV, and now they are abusing everyone that still has a future. Anyway, whatever, right? So imagine prophesying this to this witch, and then this witch decides to basically shut the door in your face and then cast a spell to make you a whore to make you one who sleeps around so that you would be the one to contract the HIV and then goes on right ahead to continue with the fornication in that same uh, bedroom but now because they have bewitched you to become a fornicator they then start stalking you on social media to see if at all you're doing it they also then inspire men who are going to rape you to come into your life or men that are going to forcefully try and come into your space to come into your space and then you fight them and you fight them and you fight them and you come back and you complain and you said stops and you say to this witch stop sending me all of these um random uh, fornicators stop sending me all these random spiteful men that are trying to rape me bottom line is at the end of the day while you might send a whole bunch of sorcery my way to force me to do what i don't want to do i get to make the decision at the end of the day if at all i want to capitulate to what it is that you're forcing around my life and if i don't do it these men can't rape me they can have the desire but if i am behind a, a, a force field some kind of a wall of protection these men cannot harm me they cannot afflict me um so send them as much as you want but they will just keep on hitting the force field this witch then gets mighty 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 upset and then starts to plot and scheme with one such man that is attempting to rape the living daylights out of an innocent woman that is holding herself chaste for god and in their plotting and scheming they then have sparks that fly between each other because you know bandits criminals they then start to think they're bonnie and clyde then they go on right ahead to sleep with each other this dude then does a typical thing since he is a witch in and of himself that keeps on g g charging innocent women and has a fetish over the daughters of god so he then resents her he despises her just like amnon and tamar he has a, a sexual affair with the witch in question following which he then dumps her like a hit it and quit it a one night stand this woman then gets mighty angry super very voluminously upset <clears throat> at the fact that she's been dumped and then ramps up her sorcery ramps it up ramps it up ramps it up even more against you to force you to fornicate and then this uh random ridiculous witch causes a violent obsession in this guy that she fornicated with now she this dude now wants you this guy now wants to come at you but remember you've got a force field around you these people keep on ramming into your wall they run towards you and they bash their heads into it their skulls and they fall back like typical zombies charging a person they see through a glass screen don't know there is a glass screen so they run to it to what it hit it and then fall on the ground so this person has then created an obsessive man against you uh the obsessive man of which has in and of himself fornicated with the witch in question and now can't stand her because she's loose that way this man that's busy trying to come your way then goes on right ahead to shape shift into a christian that is what is good uh so he knocks on your door you think he's a viable guy because he now is not looking like the former menace that he used to look like and you think you can actually have a conversation because hey who knows maybe this might be my future husband you have a conversation with this menace this beast uh you exchange notes you basically start to fall in love because you think they're a christian but then you're a fasting christian you're a prayerful christian therefore somewhere along the way he manifests into demons but before he he manifests you have conversations you talk this guy claims that he used to be a fornicator but he stopped because you know the blood of jesus redeemed him the blood of jesus healed him uh and now he once was lost and now he's found and so he doesn't partake in fruitless deeds of darkness anymore so he is chased and he is clean now from fornication for a year while well, you've been clean for from fornication for 12 let's say years you've been chased waiting on god for 12 years him it's just been a year but it doesn't matter because the date of salvation for a person really the lord is the one that determines it and you can't judge a person based on your own perseverance in waiting so you allow yourself to basically fall in love with a false disciple that is presenting himself as a born again christian that isn't really he's actually really truly a witch uh very well this human individual in your conversations that you are having uh together because you're busy planning a future and what have you you then let him know that because he was a former fornicator and because you also were a former fornicator but you stopped fornicating uh before any of y'all can even start so much to start to plan a wedding you both have to take hiv tests and this guy's like fine whatever i don't care i love you i'm gonna take an hiv test this woman in the corner is aware 
that you're having an affair with a guy that she had an affair with that for the life of her left her after a one night stand because he thinks she's immoral. Uh, so she is starting to get irritated and jealous unbeknownst to herself that frankly he was the infiltration in her life. He was the thing that she sent with witchcraft. He was the exact same desire that she wanted in the life of her friend to cause her to falter, to cause her to become a harlot, to sleep around all over the show. But this guy, uh, surprise, surprise, fell in love with her for real because it's just this thing that guys do that are incredibly immoral and violently wicked. They fall in love with virgin women. They fall in love with good girls and then they decide to despise the women that they have ransacked in the past that allowed themselves to like loose cannons just basically be had by wicked men. So they cause a divide, a rift between women. Um, they cause women who are loose cannons who sleep around all over the show to hate good girls because they are the reason why these good, these bad women are bad women in the first place and then they after that dust themselves off and attempt to marry a good girl. So this dude is one such random human. So this woman finds out that this dude apparently allegedly got his act together and now is doing everything in his power to be with the Christian woman that is waiting on the Lord and not only is he trying to do everything in his power to be with the Christian woman that is in the Lord but he's actually prepared he's willing to wait for her until they get married to have sex so he is not forceful or pushy since he is a rapist and everything the way that he was with the other lady who is his Bonnie while he is climbed. She then gets violently envious, imagines that you have reached this guy for Jesus and then starts to bewitch the living daylights out of that relationship to separate it, to break it apart. Now since this dude is uh, swinging on a chandelier, basically like a pendulum, with no self-control at all, uh, in the occult, he is still in the dark, he's not saved, he has a reputation for being alive even though he is dead, he is lukewarm, he does not actually want a relationship with Jesus, he just wants a relationship with you, and he has elevated and fetishized to the prospect of sleeping with a woman that has not been with a man for 12 entire years. So for those reasons, he's keeping himself in a neat bunch until further notice. Once he's had your body, it's gonna be hell on earth in that relationship, and the Christian woman is then going to be a very miserable bride. The Lord, however, foresees this in advance. So he starts giving dreams upon dreams upon dreams to the woman who is falling in love with the wicked man. She decides to ignore these dreams because she's falling in love thinking that the devil is the one that's trying to separate them. But this woman, upon ignoring the dreams, does not just merely ignore them. She's prayerful about this guy. And she's busy asking God, is he the one? Is he the one? Not only that, uh, please uh, pave the path for us to be safe because there's so much witchcraft in my environment and we don't want witches coming up against us. So here's this woman now fasting for her new relationship and she's praying for it and not only is she fasting but there is also a witch bewitching the relationship. Well, the, rela the witch bewitching the relationship has no idea that she's actually fulfilling the prophecy of God to separate a relationship that frankly he has no interest that his daughter should be involved in but her daughter, his daughter is unaware that this is what God is doing. So she's busy allowing herself to be doted over by basically the baddest Satanist in the game. Uh, very well, this man then herein lies the situation. Witchcraft is operating from this wicked woman with the fornication. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to mistreat uh, the Christian future bride. He starts to mistreat basically his fiance. He starts to treat her like she's a scum of the earth, basically manifesting his own true character before they could even get anywhere. This Christian woman is like, no, you need to snap out of it. This is a demonic attack. Why are you talking to me like this? What's going on? What's up and what's good and what is a uh, uh, down? Unbeknownst to himself that he is just a puppet on a string by witchcraft because witchcraft works on him since he has no holy spirit. He's just a liar. Not only that, this Christian woman is also prayerful. So when you pray and you truly are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, demons shudder in your presence. They say, what do you want with us, son of man? Do not cast us into that dark place. It's not yet time. Rather send us to the pigs. Essentially what I'm trying to explain is that demons manifest. So not only has this man been sent demons, the relationship, not only has it been sent demons to separate it, and that's what he is manifesting from, but in and of himself he's demon possessed. He is a liar, he is a fluke, he is a fake, he is a rando, he is an imposter, and that imposting that he is doing is now manifesting the living delights out of his, um, itself. He then goes on right ahead to violate the living daylights out of this woman, speak to her like she ain't jack, ain't smack. 
hurts the, the creepy crap out of her. Um, however, you know, he tells himself that Christians forgive 70 times 7 times, that's what's good. So she will forgive me next time I basically shake the dust off my feet. So you manifest demons and then after a week or two has progressed, you dust yourself off and are like, I'm sorry uh, for acting a fool and out of character, out of whack. I guess that's what marriage counseling is for. We're going to go through counseling. We're going to go to churches. We are going to basically overcome our individual character flaws so we can marry in peace. But because this dude is already planning on coming back since he has actually fallen in love with the woman that he does not uh, deserve, he then remembers that, oh, there's actually a way that I can come back with, you know, a, a bit of a conversation starter. We had already had a conversation about testing for HIV, so I'm going to go in advance, basically, and be proactive and test for HIV instead of us going together. I'm going to go and test and be like, hey, babe, look, I'm sorry for hurting you for the way that I spoke to you. I don't know what got into me, but during that time, I realized how serious I was about this and how much I actually really do adore you. So I went out of my way to get an HIV test and look, it's negative. We can go again to test for you to make doubly sure, but it's negative. So he tells himself that he's going to basically give a present, a surprise to this woman of his negative HIV status, so he dilly-dallies, prances on a long hops like a kangaroo to the clinic to get an HIV test, and unfortunately for him, wah, 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 mm, it's positive. That's what's good. So he turns out to be HIV positive. His positive result then makes him exceptionally mad. He gets super duper angry, does not know out of the plethora of harlots that he has slept with who gave it to him, since he was in the business of slam dunking himself into the body of a woman like a donut inside some chocolate. He doesn't know where he got it. So here it is that this random buffoonery of a man is HIV positive now, and then he decides to take it out on the Christian woman. Already he was abusive, but this time around he becomes a super stellar in his abusive stance. So he comes back with an attitude, a bad stanky attitude, and this woman is like, whoa, it's been two weeks since we lost spoke, and you're coming back with a bad stanky attitude. He then starts to treat her like trash and dumps her before they even start to talk, almost as though he's suggesting that I didn't want you anyway, but that's only because him and this woman have had a conversation and she made it clear that HIV is a deal breaker very very well uh so that's what's how that's what happens this woman is shattered she's devastated is busy saying fiance fiance oh my goodness why are you treating me like this why are you so changed out of character blah blah what a what a fish paste etc thinking that it's all about her she's then in the corner crying like a dog herein lies the christian lady then sharing her testimony saying that oh my goodness i met like a random buffoonery and i don't know what in the world is going on it is treating me like rubbish it is treating me like a trash she shares her testimony cries and wails and wow realizes that oh he's still in love with her so um look at the end of the day i want her i'm hiv positive and i'm gonna get her anyway again therein lies the naivety of witches they think they can bring everything in their life that they want to bring into their lives and so far as they can manipulate it spiritually so this guy gets this like bright sparky idea uh, in his occult orifices that look this woman is going to accept me with my hiv and i'm going to get that done using witchcraft very well so then he pulls the spell to make this Christian woman come into his life and embrace all that he comes with, including his soul, his uh, uh, HIV. And then this woman gets a dream. She gets a dream where basically this guy is being shown with, with, a, with a positive um, HIV result. And she's not sure if the devil is again trying to intervene or whatever, because at the end of the day, this woman is still in love with like a wicked, horrible man that she thinks is Christian. Or if God is warning her that he has tested positive for HIV. Very well and very odd and very well, that's what's good. This woman then comes and says, like, oh, I had a dream that this like strange fiancé person of mine that I broke up with had HIV. I'm not really sure if that's what God, God is showing me or if at all he's at risk of contracting it and he should do a better thing. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. This dude then starts to freak the living daylights out, given that God has given this woman a prophecy showing him, uh, showing her that he is HIV positive and so he ramps it up and hooks up more and more sorcery to try and forcibly come into this woman's life by decimating everything in her ecosystem nobody is gonna love you nobody's gonna help you uh, supportively supportively nobody's gonna do you're basically going to live as maserame that would be miss cold mm -hmm. in cold antarctic conditions and have absolutely no love around so that the only kind of love that you will ever get is from me i will give you scraps of adoration when nobody else loves you and so you will take me and my hiv will just be another tuesday mm. so everything starts to fall apart in the christian's life 
all over the show. This Christian woman then finally gets to a point where she has severe conviction that this guy is actually HIV positive because God keeps panging in her brain over and over and over again through her prophetic gifting that he is HIV positive. But this guy is also the reason why the Lord keeps on panging it and panging it and panging it is because he keeps on trying with witchcraft. However, it gets to a point where this woman is like, I don't want this dude anymore. He is abusive. I don't care what in the world is going on. Plus, I keep getting visions of HIV. I keep getting them over and over and over and over and over again. So even if you were to try and come back and apologize, I'm sorry, it's a deal breaker. I want children. That's what's good. So now because this woman is busy sharing her testimony about the fact that uh, the Lord delivered her basically from a charlatan that loves witchcraft that also happened to be HIV positive, herein lies the secondary stalker witch that keeps on perusing the content of this woman watching and listening to a prophecy. Again, caveat, the thing about witches is when they hear prophecy, especially somebody who has found out that they do pro uh, they do witchcraft, they know that these prophecies are true because the prophecies basically called them out as being witches in the first place. So if you do sorcery, you tend to hide behind the veil of either Christianity or being a good little sweet girl. And when somebody says, I got a dream of you basically flying on a broom in my house and I don't appreciate it, stop doing witchcraft against me, witches become spiteful and resentful because God has exposed that which they imagined was anonymous. Therefore, they've got a respect for the prophetic dreams of people, even though they disrespect them afterwards. They understand that their prophecies are true because their prophecies exposed them as witches. Uh, the, the first line of operation is to deny that they are that thing. However, even in their denial, they are self-aware that they've done it. So they become super curious, or super intensely curious about anything else at all that the said prophet in question will have to say, because that is a God that showed them the truth about themselves. And so whatever comes out of the mouth of this uh, alleged prophet speaking these uh, things is very potentially true. So they think that if they insofar as I can just surveil you, watch the living daylights out of you, constantly just peruse your content, they then can cast a spell on every prophecy you speak. They can block everything you speak, everything coming out of your mouth, they can block it. So they make out of themselves monitoring spirits. They make out of themselves those who continually pursue prophetic Christians or Christians who have got a prophetic gifting in order to block the prophecy from coming to pass, not realizing that they're doing an ancient thing because that's how fallen souls have always been historically. Whenever the prophets of God would prophesy, they would try and come up against the prophecy and it would be the very thing that they try to come up against that fulfills prophecy. Only look at what happened with Saul concerning David. They literally fulfill prophecy. Only look at what happened with the brothers of Joseph in afflicting Joseph and putting him in slavery. They fulfilled the very prophecy that they were hoping to block by getting Joseph sold into slavery. The witches are, are, are um, uh, charged on a course by the Lord to fulfill prophecy through their wickedness. It is written in God's word that the Lord has set apart everything for its purposes, including the wicked, for the day of trouble. Therefore, when a godly man or a godly woman rocks up and uh, preaches or prophesies or gives whatever it is that is an utterance from the Holy Spirit to evil men that are going to reject this particular prophecy, the very purpose of that prophet prophesying over these wicked people is to fulfill the prophecy through the reaction by the wicked people. Their reaction ultimately charts a course of events providentially that will fulfill the prophecy. So they are like ones that just shoot themselves in the foot. If they had actually repented in tandem with the prophecy being told, they then would have stayed the hand of God from hurting the ecosystem, just like Nineveh did upon Jonah prophesying over them. But a lot of people, when you prophesy over them, don't love prophecy. They despise prophecy and so literally start all the events, putting the building blocks, the bricks on the ground to build the resistance or the rebellion against the very prophecy that is going to come to pass because of their rebellion. The very thing that they do literally ends up fulfilling the prophecy that they are running away from. So going back after that very lengthy caveat to this witch in question who is obsessed with watching her former friend's content because she prophesied wickedness 
uh, or rather observed saw the wickedness that she was engaged in and told her stop repent or perish otherwise you're going to contract hiv since she is now wonderfully obsessed with her friend that she keeps on bewitching trying to make out of her a harlot et cetera right in that bedroom of hers that she was prophesied over in the first place chants and chants and chants and chants and grants and casts spells on the prophecies that she keeps on watching of this woman that she cannot stand now because she's made herself an enemy of the cross that's what's good so every prophecy that comes out of the mouth of this woman she lashes onto every last word and has been for the past couple of months blocking it blocking it and blocking it but this time around she happens upon a prophecy since she's aware of the relationship that she is in with the man with whom she tried to separate her and since she remembers that she slept with him she then finds out unfortunately for her with all of this goosebumpy activity that the man in question that was busy fraternizing with the woman that she tried to con to convert into a whore and she was competing very violently with her she then goes on to learn that this prophetic woman that was prophetic enough to be d shown by god that she is a witch is now claiming she is now proclaiming on the rooftops to also be aware of basically an uncertainty that is dwelling in her bones because she's not 100% sure that the man that proposed marriage to her that came into her space is actually HIV positive. Remember, she slept with this guy. She's aware of him. She infiltrated him. She got upset when she saw him and her walking around in these streets singing Etta James. I heard church bells singing. I saw my love walk down the aisle. And also something told me it was over when I saw you and her walking. She had an affair with the said man. And now here it is that this prophet woman is, or prophetess, whatever you want to call a woman, is sitting on the rooftop saying, the Lord showed me the man that infiltrated my space was actually sick with a disease. She then starts to get all cold. She starts to get her blood vessels beating. She starts to get all different kinds of uncomfortable. And so after a couple of days of freaking out and pacing in this bedroom of hers, she decides to take a trip to the clinic to test for HIV and voila, she's HIV positive. Um, so herein lies the fulfilled prophecy, literally gawking at this woman who was told at the very beginning that knock, knock, knock on your bedroom. The Lord told me stop fornicating or you're going to get HIV. And instead of repenting, making like Nineveh so that God will not judge the land, the woman decided to rather get all super upset, call her sanctimonious and self-righteous and an annoying snooty little wannabe attempt to force this woman to become a fornicator that is what's good yes attempt to force the christian woman to become a fornicator and because in and of herself she was a fornicator then tried to infiltrate the wicked man into her life she upon plotting and scheming with this wicked man against this other woman ended up then having a bonnie and clyde affair she then slept with him and contracted hiv from this man who then went on right ahead to fall in love with the victim that they together were trying to plot and scheme against. Now she's all hot and bothered and now she has got sweat rolling down her cheek that is made of blood. Now she is realizing that oh my goodness literally the prophecy came to pass and if I had listened to her from the very get-go I would not have gotten in this knot and in this bunch. My attempt to cause my friend to become a whore that warned me against fornication caused Forced me to sleep with the very man with whom I was plotting and scheming against her and that man was sick since he was a pornographer since he was a pimp like Andrew Tate since he was a completely irresponsible sexual beast that was also in the business of paying for prostitute sex since he was addicted to pornography since he was a non-repentant fornicator he's somewhere along the way out of all the plethora of random harlots that he slept with got himself a nice little hiv status and then she slept with him in a moment of weakness following which this dude did the predictable thing that he does with a lot of the women that he sleeps with and abandons her then goes on right ahead to try and marry a Christian woman. So here is a fulfilled prophecy that was prophesied, that was despised by the one over whom it was prophesied. And now that very fulfillment of prophecy has caused an angry little witch to get even angrier. Now here in last, the witch with HIV alongside her accomplice in this affair. And the two of them are now actively trying to kill the woman that prophesied over both of them to repent or 
perish. Now both of them are actively trying to destroy the life of the person that warned them and should they have listened they would not have found themselves in this bunch especially the woman in the bedroom. Now she spends all of her time in her silly little bedroom literally listening to everything that this Christian says so she can come up against it with witchcraft. Now she is obsessed. She is addicted. She is 24 hours a day sitting outside of her computer listening to every last thing that this Christian is prophesying now that she has gotten over the wicked man now that she is prophesying against the wicked man now that she is certain in her bones that he is indeed sick now that she is complete in her understanding that the lord did protect her now that she is no longer taking prisoners now that she's no longer confused now that she has been rescued from her own self-delusion thinking that a wicked satanic man can ever marry a christian woman now that she is strong in holding forth against this wicked force this woman is now dedicated to bringing down her friend, especially considering that she is now HIV positive when she was initially warned. Yeah, that was an analogy and partially true um, to a certain extent because I got infiltrated into my life by a scenario of this nature. A whole bunch of my former friends and family members that I warned against fornication tried to bring a very evil man into my space when I finally did date an evil man unbeknownst to myself because he was cloaked in a veil of Christianity. They literally upon me updating my Facebook status update from single to engaged came up against the relationship. They bewitched my engagement with a Satanist unbeknownst to themselves that he was a satanist because they believed him a christian and they thought that god was finally giving me breakthrough for marriage when then they came up against this relationship this man was the one that manifested their demons i was the one that was strong i was the one getting the visions i was the one that sh that saw their attack on our relationship i tried to talk to this random buffoon that you need to resist the devil and he will flee from you instead he manifest demons and treated me like trash within just a very short space of time of us being together ultimately um, I, I walked away i left him to do what he wanted to do it took him literally a couple of months to snap out of this thing that was enough time for me to heal maybe like three months it was enough time for me to heal at which point i then started getting nightmares of me having sex with this guy using a condom him insisting that we use protection because he wanted to come back what happened to cause this guy to manifest these wicked demons was the fact that he went to go and take an hiv test since i made it clear that i'm not gonna it's a deal breaker it came back positive unfortunately for him since he was in the business of sleeping with random prostitutes that's what's good never really stopped fornicating however he now fell in love with a christian woman and wanted a new leaf on life and this random buffoon when he tested positive then became even more monstrous against me bewitched the living daylights out of my life initially when the lord showed me the hiv i wasn't sure if that's what i was seeing and i was in denial about it until it, it, it got solidified my conviction concerning it got solidified and then that's when this dude started to bewitch me to accept him with his hiv now who sent me this guy who sent me a satanic man who under heaven insisted that i one settle become a fornicator and two, end up with a man that does not love Jesus. It was my former friends. It was my family members. It was all the women that I initially warned cease and desist from fornication. Uh, cease and desist from what you do. And it was that very irritation with prophecies that I uh, prophesied. And also the irritation with the fact that I knew there were witches. Because a lot of them I told them, God showed me you're into sorcery. I have forgiven you. I don't care. Just repent. The Lord said, if you repent now, he will give you a new leaf. They got angry at my discovery. However, they got obsessed with my ministry. And and what it is that I have to prophesy because I was right about them. And so they invested in a lot of witchcraft, lots and lots and lots of witchcraft against me to essentially force me to marry a deadbeat, to force me to take in my stride somebody fallen and one ultimately came into my space after a couple of years had progressed. I literally accommodated a wicked man it, from the very beginning, actually. Two such relationships have I been in with men that did not love God, that were into satanic worship. The first one fell off really quickly because I was strong at the time, financially independent, and I was not yet as violently abused, and so therefore suffering from PTSD. The second time around, that a dude rocked up in a time when I was super sensitive, going through a lot, so I took a lot more rubbish in my stride, but despite that, all God protected me. That is what is good. The first dude was a devil worshipper. I don't know, though, what his HIV status was. The second dude, also a, de a devil worshipper, however one that was also HIV positive. My ex-boyfriend has cast a spell on me to basically end up with a guy that's going to give me HIV. So this dude is a fulfilled uh, spell from my ex-boyfriend that I was lost with about 12 years ago. This creepy little ominous haunting activity going on in my life is the work of witches that were warned against insanity and then went on right ahead to contract diseases and all different kinds
kinds of ramifications for things that I warned them against. And then they got even more bitter because my prophecies about their lives became fulfilled. Now, today, they are dedicated like no man's business to finish what it is that they started where I'm concerned. So I am literally encircled by witches, witchcraft in operation. And I also am very unfortunately and very uncomfortably uh, obsessed by wicked men. They are obsessed with me. They are livid with obsession because they are being sent to a woman that they watch on a mission to basically desecrate a Christian woman and then they uncomfortably fall in love with her, are uh, prepared to do that which they were not prepared to do with for, for wicked women. These one night stands, these uh, hit it and quit it, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, things that they do with other women. They were like, no, not you. It's fine. I will dust the dust off my chest. I will remove the the, the, the leroli and all of the grime off my cheek. I will take uh, an unfortunate and uncomfortable uh, bath in a murky, dirty lake. And then I will come and pretend I'm Christian. I will bring you some rotten flowers that were grown from some soil that is not even fertile. And then I will pretend that I have been recovered from the darkness and I have entered into the marvelous light. And now I'm in love with you. Will you take me? Will you marry me? Now, I am literally a woman that is unfortunately, like I said earlier, and uncomfortable sent the missiles of wicked men perpetually because they are getting sent to me by wicked women who went on right ahead to get fulfilled the very prophecies I prophesied against them initially to cause them to repent but they didn't repent instead they decided to test the Lord their God they decided to call the bluff and in then calling the bluff contracted the very HIV I warned them they would get they went on right ahead to marry the very evil satanic men that I warned them they would end up with if they don't repent. They ended up basically uh, battered wives by men who are also very severely um, uh, uh, addicted to sorcery. They ended up the baby mamas of some of the worst men in the town and so now they're very miserable wives. That's those that got married. Others that did not get married are precisely unmarried because of the fact that they took a walk to the clinic after sleeping with some dude unbeknownst to themselves how that even happened and tested positive for HIV. So now they are single and bitter not getting married because their HIV status has made their dating prospects very shallow and so for those reasons now they keep coming at me to make me walk in the same mistakes that they are walking in so I am being targeted and abused by a combination of two one of two women the first batch is m women who marry some of the worst most disgusting men and now they're bitter at me for it or women who can't get married because now they're sick with HIV and they are scattered all over my family set and my friends set and to this day they are still trying to force me to do that which they did that caused them to fall and their obsession with my ministry is precisely because I prophesied to them before they got in these shoes before they fell into the mud i told them repent or perish they didn't they bore the consequences and now they are forcing my living conditions to be that way the men that they f shoot in my direction the wicked monstrous um uh, uh, ominous and anomalous weird little aberrant creeps that they send me end up fulfilling the exact same sorcery that they send me make her live in cold antarctic conditions make sure that she gets nothing at all a no ounce of help other than from a devil worshiper so it is no wonder therefore that every last man that has ever contacted me has either been a devil worshiper or a man into exploitation in other words what's in it for me what's in it for me so they end up breaking the living daylights out of my heart because of observing this trend over above uh, the past year since I went back on social on social media to upload my content I have made a decision to stop responding to anyone at all that dms me stop responding to anyone that emails me because every last one of them is an infiltration they may or may not be witches not every guy that has contacted me is a witch but every guy that has contacted me has tried to exploit the circumstance and every last one that has contacted me has not been saved at all every last one that has contacted me has tried to see if they can't get anything out of me they are not even aware these men in and of themselves that the reason why they were drawn to me is because they were typicalities that were charged to my general ecosystem by witchcraft they were a particular kind of man that is fallen hates god has no relationship with him but has a reputation for being alive even though they're dead so they've got a christian um what do you call this thing outward appearance Otherwise, I wouldn't even talk to them even in the slightest. But they don't know God from a bar of soap. And they come into my space and after a season, they manifest demons. Indeed, just like that song by Destiny's Child. At first, we started out real cool. Taking me places I ain't never been. But now. Yeah, literally, at first, we start out cool. 
and then and i haven't dated every last one of them only one became my fiance the rest claims to come in the name of comfort um condolences for your sorrow uh um uh, may the lord have your back i apologize what not and then as soon as they helped me out in one way or another and we had a friendly relationship exchanging um notes basically thinking that i'm fellowshipping with a brother in christ they then start to manifest demons where they insist that i be with them or else they're gonna cut me off and then they disappear and those that have been involved in sorcery then make sure that my living conditions get worse and worse and worse until i eventually accommodate any or one of them these men are unaware of the fact that they were sent to me by existing sorcery by some pretty evil women friends family members and colleagues basically who racked their own lives with fornication and all different kinds of manner of wickedness that they're involved in including witchcraft and once the ramifications of such deeds as these bore their ugly heads reared their ugly heads in their lives they then decided that i'm not gonna go out alone i'm not going to fall alone and so they have done nothing but dart me with this, these poisonous darts from a distance and sent me some of the most um, ominous and nefarious men that i have ever met as a result all these years down the line i'm now sitting where i am sitting incredibly traumatized by the increasing wickedness of my family members increasing wickedness of anyone at all that meets me increasing wickedness and insistence and persistence of rapey men men rapey men men that are into random forceful um sexual harassment of women i keep on getting found by them and when they find me they keep on casting spells on me blocking other men from coming along they get possessive over me they fall in love with a woman they frankly cannot touch neither have and this falling in love of theirs then makes them upon observing my conditions and how it is that i am living it then causes them to be like at some point you will eventually capitulate mm. let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me let's talk about all the good things and all the bad things uh baby let's talk about sex that's all they think about when they look at me and they're even prepared to wait for me to have sex after marriage because all that the devil is interested in that i should marry a wicked man a satanist he doesn't care if the satanist is hiv positive he doesn't care if the satanist loves god he has no interest he all he wants is to marry me to a wicked man so whatever his stats are whatever he will bring them along and how it is that they are trying to water me down soften me basically tenderize the meat that i am is by bringing one after the other after the other after the other until i am eventually so exhausted that i will take the lesser of two evils so essentially to end up with some devil worshiper but hey guess what at least this one is hiv negative with some devil worshiper but hey at least this one is not rude at least this one does not have a criminal record at least this one is not an attempted murderer at least this one is it does not have two ex-wives at least this one they are literally trying to soften me up until i will eventually accommodate any devil worshiper just one with better statistics lo and behold indeed i did dream about such a thing as this coming into my space last night and the thing that is bringing it into my space is yet again wicked immoral untouchable women or at least they think they're untouchable because they love the devil wicked immoral women that are elevated and celebrated in society even though they are wicked and they are destructive to young girls and women they are destructive to fellow females because they are throwing women in harm's way putting them in a position to one day ultimately be killed by husband or boyfriends south africa has got a very bad case with gender-based violence so the dream that i not dream sorry the prophecy this little analogy that i am making to help you understand how it is that witches fulfill their own prophecies that have been prophesied against them because they will not repent they get hung on the very gallows that they set apart to hang other people they're like haman in the book of esther i am predict i am precisely accurately sharing exactly such a thing as that so what you're looking at with my particular life is basically the fulfillment of prophecies spoken against a whole bunch of people and these fulfilled prophecies are what cause these witches to ramp up in their insanity and it is in ramping up in their insanity and trying to block extra prophecies that has been, that have been prophesied over them it is these very um uh utterings uh, utterings that are being prophesied against them and them trying to come up against them that are going to fulfill the very death curses that i keep on talking about so everybody that um eh, that i have said god is gonna kill this woman in south africa uh the dirty little filthy man in america my ex-boyfriend when i say they will die people are looking at me on some guy but literally god is not about to go and kill people just for you like get over yourself you're arrogant and you're pompous and i'm like the lord would not have killed these people his intention was never to kill them his intention was for them to repent the lord does not delight in the one and the death of him who dies but but when a person is a chock -a block standing in the way of what god is going to do the lord's mercy will lift from them and he will rather judge them the lord rather adores grace and mercy over judgment and so he causes his disciples to also adore grace and mercy over judgment so god's basically number one his first prize is for their repentance but 
in refusing to repent and in perpetuating their sorcery and continuing over and over again like a little rodent running in a wheel. That's what causes them to get killed. So these people are like ones who are essentially suicidal to a certain extent. They send out a bullet that ricochets and boomerangs back into their skulls and kills them. They, they walk in ways that fulfill the very prophecies that they tried to prevent because they kept on being obsessed and listening to prophetic Christians that prophesied a doom and gloom to them absent of repentance and they don't repent and bring about the very sequence of events like tipping dominoes that will kill them. So I'm not saying these people are inevitably going to die. I'm saying they will if they don't repent. If they continue with their wickedness. Just as the analogy I made right now with the girl in the bedroom sitting around plotting and scheming and then ultimately the very bullet that she sent in my direction or in the direction of the Christian woman then comes back to shoot them in the foot. It was an analogy, however, one that was essentially based on a true story, frankly. That's what happened with me. They have been charging me with HIV positive men, all different kinds of manner of Satanists, anything at all. And now I have had a dream last night. I woke up from a dream where it is that I saw an evil man with a best friend in a car. A lamb it looked like a Lamborghini or a Porsche, one of those um, you know, very luxury, expensive, like super hectic hard knock vehicles. And it was blood red, this Lamborghini. And every time I see the color blood red in my dream, it always represents involvement in sorcery. It mixed with black, it is always an involvement in witchcraft. And the main driver of this Lamborghini was AKA, the dead celebrity in my country. And his best friend was some ugly, ominous, witchy, disgusting looking man that was the first one to ask me out. I was walking in the street and this Lamborghini stopped by me or Porsche, whatever it was, you ride some expensive, lucrative vehicle. Um, they stopped like the way that you would stop next to a girl walking from school type thing. My poverty is always represented by me walking around as a pedestrian as opposed to driving my own vehicle because again, they're trying to take my ministry. They stopped by me and the first initial lewd rando that was busy spewing licentious commentary in my direction to try and pursue me, I ignored him. He was on some hello, nice, hello baby, how are you doing? Come in the car, come on, let's go partying, let's go clubbing. In the dream, I was a Christian as voluminous as I am right now. So I found wicked men asking me out to quite brave i found it um naive and incredibly brave because what am i doing like no i don't want to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever that is what's good the reason why satanic men are so brave where i am concerned men that don't even have a relationship with jesus have ab absolutely no fruit that they are bearing they are evidenced very quickly as wicked the reason why they're even given bravado is because of my life it's because i'm a pedestrian walking around foot on foot instead of having my own resources etc my poverty has made them believe that at some point I will eventually settle because this is by attrition. It is to force me in such dark ominous sorrow that I will ultimately take whatever comes my way because it is much better than living with a monstrous woman that keeps on manifesting demons and abusing me every second day. That is what is good. Nobody who is a devil worshiper or nobody that is obviously not even interested in God would even be like looking in my direction if at all I had everything of my own because I obviously will have had standards that they will have observed that will put them in a position to never ever get me but now wicked men literally some of the most satanic most nefarious most hard knock involved witches are brave concerning me because they thoroughly believe that by attrition loss of money loss of um things people love affection just these very cold antarctic conditions that I live in will be enough to ultimately push me over the edge until I take the lesser of two evils the lesser among them basically a better version of a thief a better version of a gangster than the next gangster gangster like essentially settling for uh i don't know papa action in the yuzo yuzo that is like a hard knock very uh, incredible intense typical gangster versus michael schofield in prison break versus basically a really good looking handsome gangster that'll impress you or even brad pitt in Ocean's Eleven, a handsome gangster that is uh, really very charming in comparison to one that is obviously just a, 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 a textless, careless, um, trigger-happy, murderous, homicidal gangster. They hope that I will settle for a lesser Satanist than what it is that I ultimately came from. The voodoo um, priest, the voodoo occult practitioner, menacing beast that was out of prison, let out in 2020 um, after the virus uh, ransacked um, the whole earth. And so they set prisoners free in America. He is like the be all and end all of an incredibly ominous, dark, nasty, obviously this was whack. How could you try to put this in Garabo's life, man? And now the devil is like, once you have had literally a true gangster, some tactless voodoo priest come into your life that obviously did not stand a chance. It was over before it started with you. 
This time around, you will accommodate the Nita Satanist that's never been to prison. You will accommodate a Nita Satanist that has never gotten married. You will accommodate a Nita Satanist that has never had children. You will accommodate a Nita Satanist, just basically someone that is very heavily besotted with the devil, but one that doesn't have a bad rap sheet like the dude from the USA. That is the strategy now trying to come up against me. It is the reason why I will not even talk to anybody on the internet. No one will ever tap on my shoulder again and get me responding to them. I am basically at this point going forward, absent of the rapture happening, trying to get my own life back together again and i trust the lord to do that for me i am no longer going to rely on anybody i am no longer going to insist on any kind of comfort or being pampered with consolation by anybody at all because i am aware that women are still busy sending me hailing darts shooting arrows in my direction from pretty nefarious men and this time around their strategy is to get me with a lesser evil they have got lots of regret concerning breaking me up with the Satanist in America, that dark, hard knock gangster. He was actually a gangster that they let free in prison early. Mm. Instead of, uh, they, they regret breaking us up. They regret making me and him part ways by causing him to manifest such bad demons that no, I can't be with such a wicked man. That is what's good. But they didn't know at the time that he was evil. This time around, they want to be super careful with bringing a man into my space that they're going to know belongs to their kingdom. They're going to know for a fact belongs to their kingdom and they're not going to tamper with that relationship they're just gonna let it flow and breezy go through so that i will be deceived into marrying somebody with whom i'm, I'm unequally yoked that is why last night i got dreams multiple ones at that literally walking down the aisle getting married when the lord has made it clear that i am not going to get married not on this side of the rapture i have seen seen it multiple times that i'm rather gonna go to heaven and only in the millennial reign of jesus christ am i gonna am i gonna get given everything i need the world is literally at the very end of itself the rapture is about to happen there is no way this world is still going to be a going concern not when my life looks like this not when lives of christians look like what in the world and heaven it is that i'm going through we're going home the rapture is happening so whenever i see me getting married whenever i see me in a white gown walking down the aisle to a man whenever i see me basically at this 39 years of of age finally walking down the aisle because ooh, ooh finally god can nah, god is like ah that's not what i'm doing i told you if at all i was still going to con perpetuate this concern for a minute longer you would have gotten married at 28 god or you would have gotten everything that you wanted in prayer you would have had the children you would have had the life the business i would not have allowed so much sorrow and disquiet to come into your space but now what you are is one who is prophesying what it is that is about to come on the earth you are an end times christian you are going to get raptured but not before the world goes to the dogs do you understand so whenever you see yourself getting married don't believe it whenever you see yourself getting married in, in any other capacity other than post the rapture whenever you see yourself basically getting your life back together but you've got an enmity with your family members whenever you see yourself uh, having some witches gnash their teeth upset because you finally got what you wanted you finally got given breakthrough that's not me because i would not want you to get what you want in a world where everybody keeps sending darts into your marriage anyway darts to your children anyway this world that is so full of witchcraft everybody doing all this wickedness all over the show it is uninhabitable for my christians so a lot of them i have withheld answered prayer from precisely because it would not be fun for them to get what it is that they ask for in prayer in a world that is so full of jealousy so full of sabotage so full of strife so full of envy so full of destructive intention and uh, sabotage against their fellow man it would be very hard for my christians to live out their days in peace they can no longer occupy the earth in a peaceable fashion because everyone is coming against the body of christ so there is no breakthrough coming for the body of christ other than the rapture and then righteous reign because that's the only place where they're going to live healthily so if you see yourself getting married in a dream uh, even though that was your desire even though that's what you wanted do not believe it it's a deception they want you to get married to a lesser evil they cannot wait to literally combine you with an evil man with whom you're going to go into the sunset forget you ever had family forget that your family members are all demon possessed and they put you in a position to be like joseph in egypt L live a life where even malobola ahajo upon them being taken out your cousins are gnashing their teeth your mother is upset everybody is low-key jealous and they cannot stand the fact that you finally got what you asked for in prayer they're currently all trying to block everything that you are doing and so if you get it anyway there will be no one happy for you on your wedding day there will be nobody happy for you when you finally make an announcement that you're falling you're pregnant there will be nobody throwing you a baby shower the level of jealousy is such that you are going to have a very hard deliverance where there will be no one happy for you and i did not intend for that to happen i would not have allowed you to lose all of your family and let them basically slide to the dogs with all of their sorcery i would not have allowed that if at all under heaven there was still another 100 years to go i wanted you to live a life where it is that you would display what a christian's life is going to be like in the tribulation disregarded ignored completely emptied with nobody caring about them but them being strong anyway holding on to me because they realize that whom have i in heaven but god heaven earth has nothing i desire 
besides God. Your life is a, a foreshadowing of the lives of Christians in the tribulation. That's what I set you apart to do. So don't compare yourself to other Christians that have got an easier life than you because yours is a different calling. It's a ministry for the end and it is a display or a show of strength in the presence of an, a very calamitizing cold atmosphere with no love. Because that's exactly how Christians are going to be living in the tribulation. And if they can't have an example to live by, to see that actually survived that level of cataclysmic, closed, sorrowful, cold, and unloved conditions, and yet holding on fast to me, they will think it's impossible. You're going to be the thing that's going to make them without excuse if they want to commit suicide. Yours is going to be a testimony that they're going to look at and realize that they are without excuse if they want to cut a deal with the mark of the beast, if they want to get out of the sorrow that they're in by compromising or settling. You're going to be the conviction that's going to sit on their back. That Garabo lived without love, without adoration, without respect, without temperance. Nobody was looking at her. Nobody had self-control. Nobody was doing anything for her. Nobody cared for her. A human being born in, made in the image of God born to occupy the earth to be fruitful multiply to basically not be alone for god did not make man to be alone and yet they made her live in isolation solitude solitary confinement they left her without love cold antarctic conditions they made a human being live an inhuman existence they treated her like an animal continuously spat on her added insult to injury exacerbated sorrow and she survived she held on to god did not let go did not down tools did not walk away from christianity did not use her spiritual gifting for the devil and became a psychic or a soothsayer she stuck to the guns of jesus and that's exactly what is going to be expected of tribulation saints people who will have no love nobody comforting them nobody saying to them you're going to be okay nobody coming through nobody having their back nobody acknowledging that a human being should not live like this nobody having compassion for them and yet they're gonna have to hold on to a god that they imagine has forsaken them a god that they're gonna look at on some but how are you gonna let me live like this when i belong to you my life is a foreshadowing of the lives of christians in the tribulation and i am being made to survive in a way that christians are going to have to survive without love without respect with also a severe betrayal from family members who are going to hand them over to be killed hand them over to be exposed to the mark of the beast hand them over to starvation leave them out in the cold because they won't embrace a dark agenda people who are going to watch their own family members get emaciated skinny lose weight and even die from malnutrition because they refuse to embrace the antichrist and that agenda people who will have once upon a time loved them that will want to do absolutely nothing for them that will look at them suffocate the way that my mother is watching her own child basically breathe her last like a fish outside of the ocean that can no longer breathe and is flapping flapping literally kicking the last kicks of a dying horse and she still continues to watch her own child do that that is what is facing the body of christ in the tribulation and i am just a small little foreshadowing of that i'm not forsaken by god neither abandoned i have a big job to do and what it is that i am going through is a pin drop in the ocean in comparison to but i am a strong enough motivation and inspiration to anybody at all that's going to find themselves in my position christians are about to have absolutely nobody a whole bunch of people that they trust are going to bewitch them a whole bunch of people that they trust are going to betray them because of an increase in lawlessness the love of many is going to grow cold people are going to wax worse deceiving being deceived they're going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and so my life might be sad and people might crease their foreheads when they look at me think i will eventually settle think i will eventually fornicate think i will eventually end up doing something that is ominous and disrespectful to god but i can't and i won't because i have a call that's what i'm getting at i have a job to do to basically be a living example of what it means to survive the tribulation when there is no love no respect no regard no care nobody's looking out for you everybody is hoping crossing their fingers that you will finally like fornicate that you will finally bash your fist against god and ignore him finally walk out and you never do it's coming mine is aberrant a life it's weird it's anomalous do you understand what i'm saying only because it's this side of the rapture people are still marrying being given in marriage things are still looking ordinary so my life is extremely abnormal but understand i am going to be a common occurrence in the body of christ in just a couple of months after the tribulation commences people are going to lose weight from starvation not because they're actually on a diet people are going to be betrayed by some of the most trustworthy friends and family members people are going to be left to die by people who gave birth to them they are going to watch you kick the last kicks of a dying horse and do nothing because you won't take the mark of the beast so i'm not scared because i understand i'm going home and i'm never getting married but i keep getting dreams over and over and over again of wishes trying to block a marriage that is not even coming trying to block children that are not even coming trying to block love that's not even coming it's not coming i am aware i will stay in these antarctic conditions until the rapture 
so to try and discombobulate me just like confound me and cause me to fall off the bandwagon is naive because like i said i have an acute awareness of the fact that no help is coming no help is coming no one is coming for me but the rapture so i'm not scared insofar as i've got food insofar as i have got um water electricity internet to be able to upload prophecies that i see that is what it is that i am doing i'm not expecting anybody to help me because we are that close to the rapture and what happened yesterday with the suicide ideation what happened yesterday with me being pushed to an edge of actually wanting to die that even confirmed a prophecy that god gave me that towards the very end towards the very 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 end there will be a lot of people sending you death curses to commit suicide or settle like the the woman in south africa not only uh, does she try to come up against my ministry but she actually tried she cast a prostitution spell on me so that i will eventually sell my body just to make money just to make money a prostitution spell like that level of bravado that is what people are doing in these last days so when i see these things i'm thinking i'm safe I'm covered. I have a bed to sleep in every single night. I have food in my stomach. I have got everything I need in order to live a life in godliness. I actually have it pretty good in comparison to some Christians across the world. There are human beings that are literally starving to death sitting in prison camps in North Korea that have got it worse than me. So all I gotta remember is that I should not be a spoiled brat expecting more than what is the absolute bare minimum because towards the end there will be no compassion. There will be a ramp up of incredible incendiary wickedness on the part of people and a lot of sabotage the apostate church is going to be charging with blood filled fangs the true body of christ trying to cause them to apostatize just as they have apostatized their envy over the uh earnestness of true believers is going to cause them to make the lives of true christians so hard so near and impossible to live that in the absence of god cutting those days short no flesh would be saved i would not survive this thing if god intended to sit around waiting to come and grab the church for another five years another six years we don't have that time i don't even think we have a year that's what's going on situations are so dire things are so bad that people are fulfilling bible prophecy in waking life they will not only fall away from the faith giving heat to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, but they will try and drag as many people down with them as possible. The apostate church will literally try to strip naked the true body of Christ. The five unwise virgins will do everything in their power to make the wise virgins less wise. They will, by attrition, cause us to live in frosty, cold, Antarctic conditions until the Lord comes and takes us. And it is that lack of repentance that will make the Lord take us because if people repented, the Lord would stay his hand from judging the world through a tribulation, but they won't. It is their very wickedness, their very intensification of sorcery, their very darkening, if going works, wicked men will go worse, they will wax worse deceiving and being deceived. It is that very insistence upon getting darker and darker and insisting that a person falls and does exactly what you did because you settled, you became a witch instead of be patient and wait on God. That will be the very thing that is going to cause God to take the church out. He will remove the restrainer. The people who keep on standing in the gap for wicked men and women, the people that are so severely abused across the world right now, that's what's good. The Lord is going to take us out because it is no longer sufferable for us to be here if the lord delayed even one second longer i would fall away i would commit suicide i would die i am literally on suicide watch every single day i would eventually capitulate if the lord delayed one extra day by forcing me to be in these conditions i would never settle the end result of this thing is the rapture or suicide because i find witchcraft and witches so abominable that i would never settle for one first and foremost so dating one ending up married to one that'll never happen and secondly i find the practice so disgusting that i personally would never ever attempt or dabble with it just to get out of this so since there's only one way out of this go to heaven i promise you right now absent of the lord wrapping his church wrapping this thing up taking us home you're facing my funeral i keep on hearing the funeral service the funeral service of Karabo. yeah that is only if the lord tarries even one extra day he will give me just enough strength to get to the very day that i would end up dead that's what you must understand i would much rather die than be a witch or die than accommodate a witch i can't stand them i would go so far as to say i hate them i have a violent resentment towards them because they have caused a great chaos on the earth so for the devil to anticipate that i would ever settle for a satanic man just a lesser evil is naive so the dream that i had with the dudes in the lamborghini one who was sitting on the passenger side was a scrub just like typical that sonia um tlc but he was brazen and bravadoed enough brazen enough to ask me out hello my sister how are you doing how are you doing i was ignoring him because i found him disgusting and i didn't even understand why a man in the occult would even want me however his friend that was the driver of this porsche his friend that was the driver was aka and he kept talking to me as he was like okay my friend you don't want my friend what about me he looked handsome he looked good just like aka was handsome and looking good the one that was sitting on the passenger side was already 
charred. He was darkened. It's like he was burnt beyond recognition. And I didn't even want him precisely because he was looking that ugly. But the one sitting in the passenger side, imagine that because he still looks handsome and still looks viable, that I will accommodate him. I ignored him too, but guess what he did? He got out of his Porsche and followed me home like a stalker, like a typical stalker. He followed me home. And when I finally arrived at home, the home of which just by the way was not even so much my home but a, a a car dealership that sold very beautiful bmws it sold very beautiful bmws that were uh, like uh, they, they had diamond encrusted uh bonnets and what have you it looked like the place where christians basically get their cars for ministry to to drive that's where it is that i was at home that was god showing me heaven that was god showing me ministry that was god showing me a wonderful place but there was this black couch inside this car dealership with these beautiful bmws in particular the car that was used was the bmw i don't know why the bmw was 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 used in this positive capacity by god nonetheless i was home in the presence of all of these bmws i don't eat in the presence of the body of christ and people in ministry sticking to the body of christ and watching content about christians across the world who are holding on to jesus in spite of world that's falling apart i was in this place but my mom was also there and she was sitting on this one black thing the one dark thing in this environment she was sitting on that black couch reading a newspaper Looking all blasé, la -di -da, and nonchalant with her feet uh, uh, folded in this environment. That was God showing me wheat growing up among tears and people that are the, the gateways to allowance of Christian persecution. I wouldn't be this badly persecuted if my mother did not basically give permission to any man at all that wants to take their child, her, her child like a prostitute had not done that. If my mother had not mistreated me like this, if she had not abandoned me to the dogs and the sharks, all these brave animals all over the show that think they can just come into my life wouldn't be like this. If my family was treating me right, I would not be so bravely pursued by some of the most evil men on the earth. I would not be so bravely pursued by wicked women who think that because of what my mom is to me, they can just do whatever they want. And my mother was literally a gatekeeper. She was sitting by the door of this car dealership on a black, black couch, her feet uh, crossed, sitting on the sofa, reading a newspaper. And this uh, AKA dude came and uh, tried to talk to me. He was following me. I told you, he followed me from his car, from the Porsche that he was driving. He followed me all the way into this car dealership that I understood to also be home. And when I arrived at home, initially he was scared um, of, uh, what do you call this? The, 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 my mom. Initially, he was scared on some, oh my goodness, like, you know, imagine a teenage girl, you see her at a mall as like a lewd little licentious boy, and this teenage girl is walking in the mall with her parents. You would not be brave to ask this teenage girl out, or to pursue her, or to harass her sexually in front of the parents, but you would wait for the teenage girl to be by herself, to then try and pounce on her, now that the parents are not there, because you understand the parents to be a protective force, right? Mm, that's what you would do. This guy, this AKA dude, in my dream, um, initially was scared when he saw the the presence of my parent that's what's good but then upon realizing that she's nonchalant la -di -da, lack of, they could not care less about what's happening with me when he made that observation he then was bold enough to even walk into the car dealership and continue to persist and ask me out and ha ha hassle me and accost me even though i wanted nothing to do with him the dream then ended when i woke up and I asked the lord what, the, what in the world does that dream mean he was like they're gonna keep on pursuing you all the way up until you enter heaven all the way up and like you're literally going to be sitting among your brethren waiting for the rapture and these men are going to keep coming at you like missiles they will keep coming at you like bombs and the thing that's going to make them brave to do that is the neglect of your person by women neglect of your person by your family they will get braver and braver and they will think that they can bring a lesser satanist into your life and so far as it's a satanist at all that you will find yourself one day nicely miserably ma married to a wicked man to a wicked man that's what's good so uh, basically in this dream it ended with me being like get out i don't want anything to do with you get out i don't want nothing to do with you but he didn't care he was just persistent he kept on asking me out because they believe that the day is going to arrive thoroughly when i am finally like okay look i'm suffering too much plus my family doesn't care about me so come in come in and dine with me except i was in basically ten amount of heaven where there were all these luxurious cars it's only a matter of time before god separates the wheat from the tears in the uh, run-up to the separation of wheat and tears how However, there will be a lot of bravery in, intensify, in an intensifying measure against the body of Christ. There will be men who are more and more evil, literally brave to ask Christian women out that want nothing to do with them. And they will harass them and stalk them obsessively, literally using attrition, messing with their ecosystems, cursing them, curses of poverty, curses of... Uh, coldness and uh, sowing discord between family members to make sure that a woman that does not belong to him will come into his space. So there's like a nefarious, ominous beast in the United States of America is apparently, according to the Lord God Almighty, the least of my worries right now. 
because what he is is being phased out what he is is being phased out where it is that like an obviously evil dark disgusting thing will come into my space and try to marry me that is not even going to happen anymore because i am obviously so with my guard up right now that i would never accommodate it now what's coming now what is trying to basically throw itself like a dart in my direction is something that does not look so bad but it is still incredibly and entirely and voluminously evil in my dream aka was driving a porsche but it was a red porsche or a lamborghini or whatever basically god is showing me that something or someone that is going to try to come into my life using money and it, it will be an evil man like just there will be an infiltr an, an, an insistence in coming into my space by still evil men but ones who imagine that they will have a shot because of the fact that they have got a little bit more money and also a look a little less bad so they won't be people with like i said criminal records they're not going to be people with like bad stats rap sheets baby mama scattered all over the show maybe even hiv it's going to be people that look good on paper but they are kingdom of darkness employees they work for the devil they are determined for satan they are easily caught busted by people with prophetic giftings but the wickedness of the last days is going to give them bravado indeed it is written in matthew 24 that because of an increase in lawlessness the love of many will grow cold people are going to be given a brazenness and a bravery to pursue things that are out of their league because everybody will have abandoned some of the baddest and like biggest gems on earth to be left in jefala to rot and die that's what's good people are going to be abandoned with no love that are so valuable that all manner and kinds of criminals and menacing ominous beasts are going to imagine themselves feasible options for them that's why the occult is getting bolder and bolder people uh, don't love each other anymore people aren't protecting each other mothers and fathers are not protecting their daughters and so for those reasons some of the most evil men are trying to marry innocent women they're trying to marry women that don't have them coming they are trying to marry girls that frankly do not deserve to be wed off to a satanist they are entitled and they are pushy and forceful and they have told themselves that i'm going to get what i want even if at first just a forceful rapey spurt it's full of sexual molestation they will just get it and get it now and there's nothing you can do to prevent me that's the bravado that is given um people in the occult why aka he was in the darkness when he passed away not only that he's currently a dead man the lord is showing me just dead people walking around insisting on getting living beings insisting on being with those that have been saved consecrated by god for his job wicked evil men being infiltrated into the lives of godly females indeed it is written about them in second timothy 3 janice and jambres who worm their way into the lives of weak-willed women burdening them with passions it's all just fulfilled bible prophecy 2 timothy 3 perilous times will come in the last days there will be these entitled men that will consistently try to keep marrying godly women when they love the devil they lick him like ice cream breakfast lunch and dinner they are besotted with rituals and they will want to come in and marry godly girls marriage is not coming for me i'm not waiting for a husband i'm not waiting to have children i'm not waiting for breakthrough a house i'm not waiting to pay my road to, to, to get an apartment i am not waiting to fix my car i am not waiting to be able to buy my own groceries to be able to cook my own chicken because i don't eat red meat but in the family they keep on keep cooking cow i'm not waiting for a better life i'm waiting for the rapture and until then i gotta be content with literally the minimum amount of what it is that i have currently the small little like provision that i currently have a roof over my head an electric blanket underneath my bum at night in winter when it is colder water in my body when i am thirsty when i have just that literally godliness with contentment is great gain i have all that i need in order to live a life in godliness i have just enough and that's all i need that is all i need i don't need more and it is precisely the lack and the want of extra of more things that is attempting to cause me to fall off if i was homeless maybe i might actually be reachable if i was um what is this hungry starving malnourished maybe maybe i might be a feasible thing to gun for but i have literally all my basic needs in a bunch the very minimum ones at that and that's all i need i have a computer that works i've got internet i have got everything i need at a minimum to basically do the job that i need to do more than that is not necessary and it is the desire of more and the sorrow over not having more that is the the, the loophole the, the entry the the the, 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 po the point of um what do you call this the point of um uh, infiltration that the devil is trying to use he is trying to utilize my lack of extra things that are essentially at this point satisfiers and not hygiene factors let me just explain hygiene factors and satisfiers to you briefly before i shut this message out um think about the hotel business if you go to a hotel and you walk in there and the sheets are 
are dirty or there's like a tampon on the sheets or there is no toilet paper you'd be very upset why because basic needs are not met but if you walk into the hotel and they have sprinkled flowers because it's your honeymoon on the bed uh with, with roses like petals it's something they didn't have to do but because they did it you feel like oh this is really great that's a satisfier so in the absence of hygiene factors being in place something is entirely unacceptable but in the absence of satisfiers being there you won't even miss them uh, rose petals on your bed are satisfiers uh clean sheets in the hotel those are and towels and uh, toilet paper those are hygiene factors insofar as your hygiene factors are intact thus saith the lord don't focus and concentrate on satisfiers because that's the thing that the devil is going to use to try and infiltrate your life so if you do not have hyaluronic acid for your skin to moisturize with if you do not have uh what do you call this um even benzoyl peroxide to deal with acne if you don't have even tampons for crying out loud if you do not have uh what do you call this um love respect adoration from people in your environment if you don't have protection from people that are going to make sure that people have a hotel those are satisfiers it is a nice to have for your sister to respect you a nice to have for your mother to love you at this juncture at this present point where you find yourself right now it's a nice to have but insofar as you've got water to drink uh, food to eat insofar as you've got a bed to sleep on at night insofar as you've got internet to be able to continue to upload your content insofar as your mind is still intact insofar as you have got everything to basically just live from day to day without facing death that's all you need because really frankly if you run out of hyaluronic acid there's more where it came from garabo you're going home if you run out of moisturizer you're going home if you don't have tampons you will literally use tissue until your period ends you don't need certain things but you need others and those that you need are intact everything you need is intact you don't go hungry even a single day that's all you need so do not look at your depleting toiletries for instance which are apparently needs for some people but i would go so far as to beg to differ with that because only look at the persecuted church in north korea they don't have basic things women there have to likely go through their period every single month using nothing they just bleed and bleed and bleed and that's it and yet i'm complaining when i've got like i said was stacks of toilet paper i don't care that i can't even afford to buy tampons at this point i do not care because people have come at my finances they have tried to make me so desperate that in order for me to proper here in the deal buy tampons i gotta marry a satanist i gotta accommodate a satanic ideology i have got to basically sell my soul just like esau for a loaf of bread just to get moisturizers i'm not that vain i'm sorry i am not so vain that i will literally give my soul over to be able to replenish my hyaluronic, or hyaluronic acid i'm not that vain i am not so vain that i will do anything to replenish my retinol i am not i am not so vain that i will throw my soul away and everything that i stand for so if I have to dry up and use nothing but Vaseline on my face every day, then by all means, on my acne prone skin, but I don't care because naked I came into this world and naked I will leave. God has given, the Lord will take away. You don't get to threaten me with a depletion of stupid things, things, things that I don't need. If you take away my bread and my water, then maybe you might have something on me. But right now, the basic provision that I need from the Lord on high is here. And I don't even think I'm going to run out of you on a hyaluronic acid yet thingy because we are that close to the rapture. We are that close that I don't even think I'm going to have any of my current toiletries depleted before we go home. It's that close. Because if God does not cut these days short, no flesh would survive. Humanity, you have been spoiled by convenience, do you understand? So much so that you are literally selling your soul, your souls to the devil for satisfiers and not hygiene factors. Insofar as you have bread enough to eat for the day, you better be content. Seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and everything else will be added to you. I don't need more than what I currently presently have. And yet people are literally trying to use satisfiers when I am spoiled with an abundance of hygiene factors. So abundant are my hygiene factors that I am among the only South Africans that when there is a power cut, I still have electricity 24 hours a day. I am among the few South Africans that have got internet 24 hours a day. That is how abundant my hygiene factors are. And yet people are out there trying to dangle satisfiers in my face. You're trying to dangle a pipette that has got hyaluronic acid in my face. When I've got 24 hour electricity, some of the people who watch my content don't even have 24 hour electricity. And yet bang della, like the stupid woman from South Africa that bewitched me has to keep on buying prepaid data for crying out loud she doesn't even have Wi-Fi and yet she has bewitched me get a little hygiene factor steady car now yeah now when she lacks a basic internet provision 24 hours a day and she's coming at my ministry it provides brazen they are bold with their sorcery without realizing that a person that is in Christ gets stuff like what it is that I'm currently helping you understand I get it 
So no, I don't have any fear. I'm sorry. I don't have any fear at all of lacking stuff, 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 things, 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 not even tampons. If anything, even the tampons I complain about, my mom made a decision out of guilt to give me 500 rands on my birthday. Right now, I'm about to go to Discam to buy those very tampons so that I don't even have to use tissue. But even if I was like, hmm, no, instead of buying tampons, I would much rather buy something else that will last me a little bit longer. It's fine. I'm only on my period for four days. And if I have to for four days, keep on changing out tissue, that's what I will do. But I won't even have to do that because like I said, I can currently afford to buy tampons. So come at me with something new, witches. Innovate afresh for crying out loud. If you really want to stumble a daughter of God that understands that naked they came into this world, naked shall they leave. God has given, God has taken away. If you want to stumble a person like that, come up with something else. Be more innovative. But to try and take away satisfiers from a person that understands the that godliness with contentment is great gain, that he, a person that has been trained to be brought low and how to abound. Like Paul says, I know how to abound and how to be brought low. Yet in all of these things, godliness with contentment is great gain. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and many who have wandered into it have pierced themselves with many gains all y'all that busy keep on listening to Creflo Dollar and Kenneth Copeland these wicked health wealth and prosperity preachers that are making you think that God is not there when there is no money you're like Job's wife who tells Job kill yourself because what are you going to do will, will you still maintain your integrity why don't you just curse God and, and die and Job's Job responds to her on some will you only praise God in good times and in bad you're a foolish woman leave me alone that's all that I can keep telling people. When a person is truly born again, the Lord preserves them and gives them the kind of mindset that I have got. There is no coming up against that. In an earth that is so materialistic, that is properly imaginative of the fact that a woman can give away her entire dignity for a box of tampons, is naive. But this world will become more and more godless towards the end. So much so that they will literally think they can keep on pushing and prodding and poking at people who are obsessed with the adoration of money in order to force them to do what they want to do. And upon observing enough people settling in this regard, then go on right ahead to blanket paint that moral turpitude on people that have given their lives to God. We are re. Do you understand? The road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it. And so the thing that we do is different. However, it is very rare. So when people happen upon it, they keep on poking and teasing at it until they look like fools. Until they look abusive. Until they look they look like a bunch of pimps. Literally trying to recruit like human traffickers. A whole bunch of prostitutes that have not had this coming. They are trying to convert an entire virgin into a prostitute overnight. That is what people are trying to do right now. It is naive in the worst way. But they will have the brazenness of it. And the bravado. Because so many people are dangled by money on a noose. On earth. So many people. So many women. Viable, thriving, intelligent women are allowing themselves to do only fans. That's the world that we live in today. Everybody loves money so much that they don't they've lacked they lack dignity and morality look at NPC, npcs on twitter not twitter what is this tiktok right now these women and men pretending to be ai robots or whatever in order to make money doing lives like selling your soul and definitely like to do something so stupid and eerie freaky just so you can get twelve thousand dollars in one session that's what the world looks like today and so when people observe some silly little woman doing an npc on on, on, on tiktok they then look at garaba on some girl you or you it's only a matter of time like do this do only fans do whatever or accommodate some satanic dog man because you don't have money as if though that is the be all and end all of a need no it is not god is a need man shall not live by bread alone but by the word that proceeds from the mouth of god so keep coming at me with curses of poverty and trying to pull rugs under my feet and watch the lord laugh at you i'm signing out in christ's name Cran K. peace